Hello everybody, welcome to another Valheim video. Today we're going to be moving buildings around. Did you know that it's actually possible to save individual buildings in Valheim? All you have to do is get the world file onto a computer that has Valheim. From that point, it's only a matter of knowing what to do. The easiest way to get plan build installed successfully is to use a mod manager like R2 Modman or Thunderstore. All you have to do is go to the online section here and then search for plan build. Then you're going to get this one right here by Matthias de Croc. Download it and then download with dependencies. This is going to add all of the three dependencies automatically. However, if we go to the config editor, there won't be anything there yet because you have to start the game once with the profile for the configs for each mod to show up. That's a norm across all mods. It's not just these ones. So we'll start modded. In this video, I'll use the plan build mod to save, copy, paste this building that you see somewhere else. To begin, You'll need to make a blueprint rune, which will be available on the regular crafting menu with just one stone. The blueprint rune and plan build in general has many, many different features. We're going to focus just on the copy, paste, and saving that you need to do what I've been talking about. The easiest buildings are buildings like this, which don't have any basements or any terrain edits. They're just on flat terrain. But for now, we'll keep it simple. Equip your blueprint rune and navigate to the tools section. The second one from the left is add to blueprint selection. We're going to pick that one. Now, we could just click manually on each piece, right? But this would take a long time for a whole house. So there's a better way. If you hold control, you'll see this circle. And if you scroll up or scroll down, then you'll be able to increase the range of the circle. And what you want to do is place the circle in a way that the whole entire building is surrounded by the circle. Just like this. We're going to do it right here. And then click. Make sure that you're holding control down when you click. Otherwise, it won't work properly. And now we can see that we have selected the entire building. That's all it took. Now, it's not that simple though, because if we just save this, it's going to be a huge pain to place it properly. Placing these is the hardest part, and that's what I aim to make easier for you. Go to your blueprint rune again and into the tools section, but this time we're going to pick the center point marker. All right? And the way you should think about this is you should put it at the entrance or the front. Don't think of it like a center point. Think of it more like a front point, okay? So it should be on the ground, not connected to any piece. And we're going to put it right there, okay? So this is the front of the building, and the center point is there. Now we have the absolute minimum that we need to save the building. So I'm going to go to the Edit Selection option. And now just click anywhere. This will bring up this menu here. So we're going to save it. And it's going to be the tutorial house. Now let's run off and find some flat place to place the new building in. This spot looks flat enough. So what I'm going to do is right click. And then go to terrain tools here. And make sure this circle isn't too crazy. Hold down shift. And that's going to just sort of flatten the area we're working with a lot. And if you want to reset this at any point, you can just hold down Alt, and that's going to reset the hill to its default value, as you just saw there. To access the building that you've saved, go to the Blueprints section, and your building will show up there. If it hasn't shown up there, it's probably because you named it in a way that put it in a custom folder. So we can see here, this is the tutorial house. And now you can see a ghost image of where the house will be. And if we scroll with our mouse wheel, we'll rotate the house, allowing us to pick the spot that we think it'll fit. Now you can see that what the center point really became is basically the cursor spot. 
you can see that the thing I'm looking at is the center point we placed before. Oh, look at that, the classic problem. I placed it, but it only placed these build designs. So what we're gonna do is open the console and type bp.undo, all right? Now, I'm gonna tell you straight off that there's a config file, you can just change the default, so all you do is click. But without even editing the config file, you can do something to make it work. All you have to do is look at the exact right spot and then hold control and then click. Now it's gonna place it directly. As you can see, this is just a regular vanilla building now. It was placed here, but the terrain wasn't changed at all. These kind of buildings are much easier to move. Now, let's say that you want to remove a building that you placed. Obviously, you could just do the bp.undo command right after you place it, as I showed you earlier, but in addition to that, there's other tools that you can use. We can go to the same add to blueprint selection as before. And what we're gonna do is select the entire house, and there we go. But now, instead of saving the house, what I'm gonna do is go to the edit selection, and then we're going to click anywhere, and we're just going to do delete. That's another way that you could just eliminate huge amounts of building. And you can also do the BP undo to then put the stuff that you just deleted that way back. Now, we're gonna add everything again by holding control and making the circle quite big. There we go. And that selected the entire building. But this time, when we go to the edit selection menu, we're going to go to cut. So I can show you what it does. You can see that it basically deleted the building, right? But if we look around, we can now place this building wherever we want. And this is a great time to talk more about placing buildings because there's a keyboard shortcut that you're gonna need to use a lot here, and that's Control and Alt. Holding Control and Alt will allow you to move the placement up or down. And this is very, very important. Hold Control, place it, there you go, but it immediately will start falling apart because it can't actually exist that way. There's nothing holding it together. And as usual, we can just type bp.undo to just get rid of everything. This is why what you would normally do would be to look at where it's gonna get placed and then hold down Control and Alt and then put it into the ground a little bit, like kind of inset the building into the ground. This way, when you spawn it, the building actually spawns into the ground Everything you cut will show up in this clipboard section of your blueprint room, but be very careful because this is temporary. As soon as you exit this Valheim session, this will get deleted. So make sure that you save everything to the blueprint section that you actually want to keep. As you can see, you'll still have problems when everything isn't totally flat. And that's where using these terrain modification markers comes in. Here we have a tavern, which looks simple to move at first glance because it's all on one level. But if we look closer, we can see that there's actually a basement here. So how would you handle this? At first, the process is the same. You'll select the blueprint rune, go inside the building, and try and go to the very center, and then hold control and click. This should select everything in the entire building. It'll even save which in chests and item racks. It's really awesome. However, as I mentioned earlier, this area has a basement, right? So we need to go down into the basement onto the bottom level, right? And kind of size the basement up. Looks like it's a rectangular area. It's got that storage area there, over here and here. So the center point is gonna be right about there. What we're going to do is select one of these terrain modification markers. And now, after we select it, you'll see there's this radius around it. And you can click on, essentially, the marker itself, and then change its parameters. What we're going to do is make it a square, and then that should change it here. 
But these lines, this wouldn't really work because this would make the terrain clip into the wall. You want to make the terrain it does a little bit more. And we'll also have to do it even more over here to accommodate for these chests. So I'm going to take it from three to five and then see how that does. We can look and look for the edges. We don't want to see any of those white boxes. We want them all to be hidden further away. And you can see that they're right there. So this looks like it would be fine because all of these chests are going to function without a problem. Now, if we were to just copy everything, it wouldn't work because we need to get that center point. This time, it's going to be right here in front of everything. Now, what we can do is go to Edit Selection and then click anywhere and then go to Save. I'm going to mark this as the... Let's go find a flat spot somewhere to place it. So here's our nice super flat spot, and we're going to open the blueprint rune up, go to blueprints, and then find the troll in right here. We should be able to place it, hold control to make sure it direct places, and then if we look around, we can see that the outside is pretty good. It's a little... You can see that the grass is coming up there. Let's fix that. All we have to do is do bp.undo. Now let's select it again. But this time, we're going to hold Control and Alt, and then scroll up on the mouse wheel just a little bit. Now we're just going to hold Control and place it again. This time, you can see that it placed much higher up. So the blades of grass aren't showing through the floor. But now, let's go double check, because is it okay down here? Well, if we look, it looks like we messed it up a little bit. The floor is a little bit too high, but aside from that... I mean, the rooms here, with a little bit of touch-up, we could make this work. So there we have it. If you are patient enough, you could use a lot of these terrain modification markers if the build has lots of them. It can get kind of complicated, but as long as you put everything in the right place and you make copies and backups, then everything is going to be fine. Just a word of warning, though. If you're managing a server and you move people's buildings around, they don't know that this kind of thing is possible. So they often think that you just destroyed their stuff or someone else destroyed it or they got griefed. And it's not uncommon for people to just log in, see it's gone, and then log out without realizing it's actually a block or two down the road. If you want to rent your own dedicated server or support my work, consider going to Zap Hosting and using the code JPValheim. And if you want YouTube to show you more Valheim videos, consider liking this video or any other video on YouTube about Valheim, and then YouTube will show you more of this kind of content.